all of these are service providers. And then, of course, you look at who is doing the planning in these areas, who is doing the policy making in these areas. The short point is, we are now at a stage where the needs are very different. And therefore, how you take the global models, the regional models, and downscale them to get the kinds of results which are meaningful to these various kinds of service providers becomes important. I think we are all here today because we belong to one of these communities. We see us as being users of the kind of information, the kind of knowledge that flows out of downscaled systems. The fact that we have, you know, when we started the registration, I was horrified. Um, I think, Meena, over the, over the various workshops, we have a thousand people. But uh, as I said, I was also gratified. Because it tells us that there is a huge need, here and now need, for this kind of interaction. All of us have our problems. We get together, we discuss our problems. There are people here who have done more of it, so they have, the, have some solutions. The discussion of the problems and the solutions would leave, lead us all to how we do our own jobs better. We are amazingly proud. We are delighted that Terry has been able to play the role of bringing these different communities together. And I hope that forecasts informed decision making would lead to better integration of information in the operational process, in the planning process, in the policy making process. I would like to welcome each one of you again. I am particularly thankful to Dr. Ramesh for being with us here today. The IMD is an extremely important user. And to give you a, a snippet of the importance of IMD, many years ago when I used to wear a different hat um, in the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in the Government of India, and Air Marshal Tiagi was the uh, Director General of the IMD, I came to his office going, you know, ready to go on bended knees and request for the temperature, humidity, air, wind speed data, which could be used for better air conditioning design. To my very pleasant surprise, he was so open. He said, of course. And not only that, he pushed the IMD to make data available, which traditionally, it was sort of, I wouldn't say not wanting to, but was unwilling to. But that data helped create the temperature bin data so ordinarily used across the world to create the temperature bin data which has now become the basis of air conditioning design today and sir so now is being restructured to look at what are the kinds of you know the few days of high humi of of high humidity and high temperature and how do we bring that into the design of air conditioning systems so Again, let me again welcome you all, and I'm very sure that we'll have an extremely stimulating day here. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. And, um, on behalf of the U.S. government, the State Department, who actually provided all the uh, the, fund, the U.S. State Department, who provided funding for this this workshop under the uh, the U.S. India Partnership for Climate Resilience, that was started in 2014 as an agreement between uh, Prime Minister Modi and then President Barack Obama. Um, we're very glad to be here. Um, glad to participate in this workshop. Uh, this is the second of at least three workshops that we will be doing uh, on climate model downscaling here in India. Uh, the first one was uh, last year in March. Uh, we had a workshop at the Indian Institute for Tropical Meteorology in Pune. A very successful workshop and we had um, at least 60 people very much like you that participated in that workshop. We were actually very gratified to see uh, all the interest 
in, the, in this kind of climate model downscaling and information, and I'm um, glad again to see all the people here. Um, looks like we have at least 60 or 70 people here, which is very gratifying on our part. Um, so these workshops are meant to provide uh, decision makers and planners with um, climate model scenarios, scenarios of the future climate that will allow you as decision makers and planners to begin integrating uh, this kind of information into your long-term planning. Uh, I know that the state climate action plans are very important and uh, ideally that these workshops will provide you with the information that you need to um, begin uh, enhancing your um, state climate action plans. So last year uh, was one amongst the warmest years on record globally and also in India and the United States. Uh, the last three years have been the, the warmest years on record. Uh, the United States and India last year both experienced very heavy rainfall events. Um, and these scenarios that we're going to introduce you today will begin to give you the information with whether or not these kinds of um, events were going to continue in the future. You're going to have more heavy rainfall events, more heat waves, and that sort of thing. You can begin integrating that information into your uh, scenarios, um, into your action plans. Uh, so we're going to have a series of hands-on exercises that will be this afternoon that will actually allow you to see how climate model uh, output, global climate models, which give you a very broad perspective on uh, scenarios for the future, can then be used to generate scenarios for very detailed scenarios for your location. Um, so in closing, what I'd like to do is to introduce um, our group from NC State University and from Texas Tech. Um, Dr. Catherine Hayhoe, if you'd like to stand. Uh, Mr. Ian Scott Fleming. Uh, Dr. Ken Conkle from NC State University. And last but not least, Ms. Jenny Disson, who has been instrumental in planning these workshops. Um, and so with that, I wish us a very successful workshop, and uh, thank you. So now to commemorate the workshop, we have Dr. K.J. Ramesh, Director General of Indian, uh, India Meteorological Department, Ministry of Sciences, to give the keynote address. Good morning to you all, Dr. Ajay Mathur, Dr. Tyagi, Dr. David Easterling, and other distinguished colleagues from U.S., from NC State and Texas, and other participants, distinguished participants, and ladies and gentlemen. This is a very important area where uh, we need to um, assess the projections or scenarios given by the global models, various global models. IPCC has been able to synthesize all the information and provide in terms of uh, summary for policy makers and other science uh, reports and uh, AR5 has been uh, there with us to tell what is the robustness of the uh, simulations or scenarios generated by uh, different RCPs by various models and where, where the uncertainties are and where uh, we can believe and where we can take it with pinch of salt. And then added to that, since the resolution of the global models were very coarse, uh, something called coordinated research on uh, downscaling, uh, um, regional downscaling of models called CORADEX, which has been uh, another initiative of World Climate Research Program. And we have something called CORADEX South Asia, which is hosted by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune. And you must be aware of the various products available by different, uh, uh, generated by different uh, global groups and the Indian groups and hosted in real time for the users to be used. Of course, uh, um, average resolution there is 50 kilometers and one variant uh, has about 30, 35 kilometer resolution. And 
these are the data sets one has to extensively look at to generate a more representative downscaled zoomed scenarios uh, over india and different rcps they uh, people started down, downloading and using that information of course several state action plans on climate change have been uh, formulated based on the uh, observed uh, variabilities and observed vulnerabilities in different states and the projected scenarios based on cardex uh, products so that has started already but to add it to this uh, we have something else called if somebody uh, needs to look at uh, much uh, finer resolution than 50 kilometers there are uh, uh, statistical uh, downscaling tools developed by uh, Dr. Subimal Ghosh in uh, IIT Mumbai. So he has proved that from 50 kilometer cortex data to 10 kilometer uh, uh, level using the statistical downscaling tools, you can uh, have a another zoomed scenarios of rainfall and temperature variabilities on different parts of India. So that is one another opportunity. Uh, it is a fully reviewed publication and he has proved that that data becomes uh, very useful. And these are some of the opportunities already exist and we have good uh, established academic groups who will provide most representative data and the variabilities and associated scenarios in different uh, emission contexts. So we have all that information available. So what we need to uh, generate is, is a robust adaptation guidance and resilient building uh, mechanisms to different sectors. What are those different sectors? First is uh, the agriculture second is the water resources, third one is the public health impacts, and then long-term efforts for resilience building and vulnerability reduction. So what we have been experiencing uh, over the years has been uh, the increased variability of uh, extreme events taking place and their frequency, incidence, and uh, number of rainy days are undergoing some change. These are some of the features globally also felt like uh, heat waves we are seeing in uh, uh, pre-monsoon season and then uh, cold waves uh, during the winter and although uh, temperatures are above normal both at maximum side and minimum side there are epochs of uh, uh, significant cold waves happening in between. These are some of the uh, uh, features and impacts globally everybody is uh, uh, experiencing and that means extremes of climate extremes and uh, the disasters uh, like natural hazards, they have a common place. So DRR, disaster risk reduction and climate risk reduction as far as the vulnerability reduction is concerned. So they meet uh, together as far as the risk reduction planning is uh, concerned there. But in terms of uh, assessing the impacts for agriculture, water resources, and uh, um, public health, particularly then associated impacts are there on environment, uh, air quality, solid waste. So these are some of the things which we cannot ignore. They will have assist associated impacts also on the livelihoods and the quality of life and the quality of air around uh, which we all have to survive in future. So with these uh, things keeping in mind, from all the tools available, all the model products available, all the model uh, uh, diagnostics available and the guidance already published by various uh, literatures globally and India and various tools which you are going to experience today will tell you uh, to use how to extract a useful information in your area of interest where you want to contribute to uh, mitigate the adverse impacts of climate change. So these are some of the issues where we have to uh, build capacities uh, to generate a useful information and then uh, work towards it. In While doing so, what we need to do parallel? One thing is while 
dealing with the extremes means you have to have see another important factor which you may be knowing or uh, i may uh, show also uh, for uh, for flagging the issue is the variability is associated with the extremes what we are seeing we'll just flag some of the issues there this particular factor in low emission scenario and the high emission scenario uh, the rainfall anomalies or uh, southeast asia uh, particularly monsoonal asia is going to be on positive side so this is one opportunity we have to take in times to come it's a robust signal both in every scenario this is there in lowest and highest and other scenarios also similar in a similar uh, situation exists so this is an opportunity apart from other problems where we are going to have assured uh, amount of rainfall uh, likely to become available and that's where uh, in the background of heavy rainfall events their frequency increasing moderate rainfall events frequency is decreasing and number of rainy days are decreasing so with in the context of these three observed uh, impacts already because of uh, global warming environment and climate change projected scenarios are promising a good amount of positive rainfall anomaly over the region so that's where our uh, existing water resource management opportunities cannot uh, ensure to capture reuse re uh, recycle and with the full efficiency increased efficiency of water use we have to build our uh, surface water management practices and at the same time most of our agriculture dependent on rain fed so in terms of uh, reduced uh, uh, rain spell rainy days so you could have a dry spell within the rainy season for a week or more than that in that scenario we have to have the option of providing one supplementary irrigation during the crop uh cycle of 90 days to 110 days for various uh, rain fed crops so these are some of the new options opportunities we'll have to create so that uh, water use efficiency and uh, uh, high temperature resistant varieties for different agriculture uh, uh, seeds and then low moisture resistant uh, varieties these two are the areas where icr is already working to generate uh, uh, representative varieties for uh, india like particularly on uh, um, basmati uh, we have two uh, varieties already put to use very extensively in india and similarly for other crops also uh, there are uh, temperature resistant and other varieties are in the process of testing and they will be put to uh, utilization so lot of work is going on to uh, uh, build resilient crop varieties in india in the light of uh, these changes in times to come although water will become available we should not allow it to run off uh, two drains in particularly urban areas so that we have to have a means of holding on that water using it subsequently for both for agriculture purposes or domestic use or industrial use etc so these are some of the opportunities although several negative things are there uh, these are some of the opportunities which we have where with improved practices we can make use of the climate change positive effect of climate change i call it as far as uh, india is concerned in terms of rainfall so if you use properly uh, in times to come with your improved practices from local level to national level so we can have uh, sustainability of uh, agriculture sustainability of uh, water or various needs that can be ensured for that what we need to do is only we have to change our management practices resource utilization practices and uh, 
uh, need based utilization of resource should be the uh, slogan with which perhaps we have to work so there is an opportunity to build adaptive adaptive mitigation uh, practices which can be designed for different uh, societies different uh, localities and in terms of uh, risk reduction side, uh, there are going to be extremes. To take care of the extremes, we have to build early warning systems. Early warning systems for uh, cyclones we have already. Early warning systems for heat waves in recent two years we have built. And uh, National Disaster Management Authority is uh, the agency with which uh, all the state governments are uh, connected in receiving the heat wave alerts issued by India Meteorological Department and hot spots of uh, likely heat wave are also communicated in uh, one to two days in advance time. Then several response actions have been uh, initiated by various state governments over the two years because of which if you remember in 2015 heat wave mortalities were in the country were in the range of about 2700 to 2800. When it comes to 2017, they were brought uh, to the scale of just 172. So that is a great achievement which India uh, could achieve to combat the adverse impacts of heat wave by building appropriate early warning systems and disseminating it and making the local governments to take measures, matters like minimizing uh, the exposure of elderly and uh, children during the hot, uh, hot weather condition between 11 o'clock and uh, 4 o'clock and taking certain steps for uh, uh, immediate heat stress related uh, treatments in hospitals and public health uh, centers across the cities and across the localities and then changing the office hours particularly Karnataka, Telangana, Orissa state have changed the office hours during that time morning 7.30 to 1 o'clock. That is a big shift in the government in response to heat wave alerts. So these are some of the examples by which uh, exposure to the hot weather conditions were minimized by taking appropriate steps and providing safe drinking water, clean drinking water access to the people in uh, across the societies. And then those steps have yielded and uh, making awareness also to minimize their exposure unless and until absolutely essential you need not go out and uh, expose yourself to the hot weather conditions. So all those uh, steps have worked and this year again already preparatory meeting with the states is going to happen on 22nd of this month led by National Disaster Management Authority. So what we have achieved uh, in terms of uh, uh, cyclones also with improved warning systems, improved emergency response systems at the local level, we could minimize loss of life to only two, two digits and below 15 numbers in particular over the years. And now what we have achieved in recent two, three years is improved responses to the heat wave conditions. So these two are the early warning systems which we have built uh, in the recent past. So there are ever, uh, other areas where we are working is with the improved uh, network of Doppler weather the radars in the country, uh, almost about 240 cities we are giving now cast service. Now cast is now to next six hours. So we can tell where are the areas in those pockets covered by the Doppler weather radar at the moment, uh, about 200, 240 cities and districts, where we can tell in next six hours uh, which segment of the areas are going to receive heavy rainfall and what could be the quantum of heavy rainfall and then how that rainfall uh, zone is moving in next six hours and uh, where the light rain is going to happen presently experiencing light rain will have a uh, heavy rain uh, for next one hour or one and a half hour so the intensity of precipitation and zones of precipitation and their movement during the day all that is becoming possible to provide and uh, we are doing it uh, uh, extensively particularly cities like Hyderabad, Chennai and Mumbai so many WhatsApp groups are created by the local uh, urban local bodies and to prepare, to prepare for uh, uh, emergency response like to clear the water logging on the streets, uh, in highways, uh, 
some uh, engineering groups and uh, uh, waterworks people can be positioned in those areas uh, depending upon the six hourly warning accordingly you can minimize the water logging duration and uh, traffic uh, congestion etc so these are some of the examples on which we started working uh, to build response systems to heavy rainfall in cities and uh, uh, other areas so likewise we have to build similar responses for uh, uh, public health particularly incidents of vector borne and water borne diseases based on the uh, warnings for a week or two weeks in advance so those are the areas where uh, uh, climate prediction center uh, um, ncep from where david easterling is here so they have built all these uh, uh, applications and what we have built is for heat waves and uh, uh, thunderstorms and heavy rainfalls so we are bring, building uh, with nowcast services and we are working currently on uh, uh, testing those tools for incidents of vector borne and water borne diseases particularly malaria dengue and chikungunya uh, we have experimented with our tools for the 2017 perhaps for 2018 we will uh, uh, launch uh, uh, pre operational uh, surveys for public health impacts for vector borne diseases so then then next level of working is uh, how these conditions are going to affect your air quality environment that is the area we have to work uh, in future where we have to work with uh, state pollution control boards and uh, uh, urban local bodies of the government uh, state government and local governments and ultimately to manage while managing all these adverse impacts we have to also work and to ensure towards having clean air clean water and fertile soil to ensure our uh, uh, food security for times to come in future so these are the some of the areas perhaps we can think of working and building our activities develop tools to uh, provide guidance to organize response actions and action plans and make our country more and more robust to the impacts of climate change all the very best for your efforts thank you very much I now request a Vice Marshal Dr. Jeet Tyagi to give uh, the vote of thanks. And Dr. Ajay Mathur, uh, Dr. K.J. Ramesh, Dr. David Esterling, distinguished faculty members from U.S. and India, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Indian Mutual Electric Society, it's a great pleasure and privilege to extend a vote of thanks and at the outset let me thank Terry, Dr. Ajay Mathur and Meena for inviting India Met Society to be a partner to this very important workshop. As you know this workshop is being organized as part of Indo-US science collaboration and what it makes a different research or academic workshop, it's a hands-on workshop and India Meteorological Society is very happy to bring its members to this workshop and thanks to Terry uh, for extending the financial support for the 10 of its members to be here from different parts of the academic institutions. And equally important to see that it's not only the academic or research institutions, but the users, the service providers are also here. So th it makes it very unique. And to make this happen, a lot of efforts have gone behind. And I'm especially uh, thankful to, I think, Terry for taking this initiative along with the U.S. State Department and the all collaborators uh, who are here uh, with us today to provide hands-on training, uh, Ashwani from ITM and our partners uh, from US, uh, that is Dr. Ken Kunkel, uh, Dr. Hale and Mr. Fleming. Thanks a lot for being with us and I'm sure uh, this is going to be very, very uh, interactive and very, very good response uh, from, the, from the participants for this workshop. Uh, Dr. Mathur and Ramesh has brought out the importance of and necessity of spatial temporal downscaling uh, of climate projections uh, for use in both short and long term uh, at different levels, maybe the planners, uh, the users and, uh, and the administrators and the common people also uh, who, who have to be the people who will in, in the day to day life will be 
uh, being affected by the climate. So this is very timely because we are in the process uh, of various state level climate change action plans have been made but they were made on the broader <coughs> trends available. But actual projections and downscale at the city level or at, at the district or the taluk level with the real data or real projections, uh, I am sure will be start factoring after such workshops. So it's very timely as Dr. Ramesh has brought out. We are now building capacities uh, to address various issues related to climate variability. Uh, early warning systems are in place and same uh, scale of work is need to be done uh, with respect to the climate change projections and associated positive and negative impacts which are going to take place. So we have to be prepared and its real application will come only when we have a good downscale projections uh, in action uh, to take place. So to this um, extent, this workshop is very timely and I must compliment Terry uh, for taking this initiative. And no workshop can be successful as, um, uh, without a lot of hard work has gone in the background. And Mina and team here and others from Terry, I think, have done a wonderful job uh, by soliciting the, uh, this uh, getting a response, or a response, and presence here as Dr. Ajay Mathur has brought out in 9.15 on a winter day in Delhi, it, it shows itself the success of this response. So congratulations and thanks to uh, Terry team who have worked so hard. And we feel very happy as a Niamat Society to be associated with this very initiative. And we would like to continue this. I'm, it is a series of three workshops. We are very welcome. We had been impressing upon the IITM uh, also uh, to have more number of these workshops because the clientele is very wide. Uh, each state when we interact with the climate change cells and all that, they have got superficial idea about the climate change. And they are the people who are going to work on the, on the ground. So, so we have to have uh, uh, these more number of such workshops, hands-on workshops, feedback from the field uh, for the scientists to improve their, their tools. That is also important. It's not uh, that one-way transactions. We are doing, we are improving continuously. So feedback also is required. And I'll request uh, all participants to apply this, whatever is the tools are being uh, see, put to use today, and come back whether they are good, bad, or how they are doing uh, in, in the actual practice. So with these opening uh, remarks of uh, what of thanks, I once again thank uh, Dr. Ramesh, because his presence makes the acceptance of the government. And I see my colleagues from the IMED here, because they are the people in the states who are going to talk to their counterparts. So this is a commitment from the government side. Uh, let me tell the Terry and the, and the US partners that yes, we are fully uh, committed to this, this very initiative and uh, we compliment and, uh, uh, to the organizers once again and thanks uh, for associating India Med Society. And let me assure this partnership is going to be a long-term partnership with Terry and all other partners to work in this very important area. It's, 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 it's a very important area. It is going to impact all sectors, not only the water, agriculture, health, energy, and many more and um, both adaptation and mitigations, uh, we all have to play a very important role. Thanks again, and welcome to this important workshop. Uh, have a good interactions, and on behalf of William Society, once again, thanks. Jai Hind.